All right, folks, so in episode five of the DIY Chameleon Guys, James and I talked about how to make your own fogger. And of course, I went away from there and I went ahead and made my own fogger. Now, I just threw it all together just to, as a proof of concept, just so I could get the experience and come back and talk about lessons learned. And so uh, this is what I threw together. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, hit the on switch and see what happens. And we have fog. Well, good evening, J Oh my goodness, look at that. He has got <laughs> the uniform, the fog father. Look at that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, good evening, James. How are things going over there? It's uh, the rain's back, so we're gonna have to work through this with the metal roof, and uh, hopefully everything goes good. I got a little water on the floor, but we're doing okay. I can hear it. Oh my goodness! But the thing is, as soon as it hits you, it's like a day or two. It's gonna hit me. So uh, I see my future right there. Right. So all right, James. This week, uh, I we're gonna be doing a, a lessons learned. And this is, I've, I went off, I watched the DIY Chameleon Guys Fogger episode, <laughs> and I said, I'm going to do that. And it looked, looked so easy, and, and basically it was. But in this episode, I want to share with you some of the things that I went through as a first person doing it, and so let's talk about what people may run into when they're first uh, trying to do this fogger. Okay. Sound good? All right. So, I mean, you're going to say, oh, my gosh, Bill. Really? Is that your problem? <laughs> it's, it's understandable. I've, I've been doing this a long time, so I understand things a little bit different. You're the video guy. I'm the builder guy. So I think it works out well. All right. So the first thing that was a challenge was uh, I was able to find the, the shower uh, drain mm -hmm. thing uh, easily. That was great. But here was my first challenge, is finding all of the reducers and mm -hmm. finding the right ones. It, I mean, and it looks obvious when, when I'm showing it here, and there's only, and, and I found the tubing, yeah. but you got to pick the right tubing. That's, we'll get to that next. Okay. But the combination of uh, the slip valves, uh, the slip uh, the, the fittings, slip, slip joints, <laughs> joints, and the um, the threaded. That took me a long time to, to figure find out. the right ones. And so, uh, what I am going to say worked for me is first of all, I got this shower drain. Then I got this uh, this tubing to make sure I got the right tubing. And then I just went through the wall of PVC parts to find what would fit. I got the first one. Then I knew I had to get the second one. And so how about, and, and then there was this other part, this other side. Uh huh. So let's just talk a little bit about that wall of PVC parts. Uh, what are some of the... Uh, the pitfalls of someone just going for the first time and not knowing exactly what they're looking for and finding what they need. Well, we're going to give you a parts list. Okay. So that way that, yes. that's going to narrow it down for you, but this is how I do it. So what I would do is go get your shower drain first, then go get your piece of tubing because those are main, main parts that you're going to need. Right. And then I walk over to that, PVC section, and they're usually laid out in sizes, starting at half inch, working all the way up to two inch, and they'll go back and forth across each layer of those of that shelving. And then what I do is I literally will try to find what the tubing fits into. And so you'll look at the size of the tubing, and obviously you used inch and a half. So you're going to go into the little inch section. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter. Okay. So there's a You'll go into the section that says inch and a quarter, and you'll see all of the reducers. They're slip fittings, but 
but they're called reducers. And you'll look across that section of reducers. Now you have inch and a quarter tubing. You're going to want to look for a slip fitting that fits into either a two inch fitting. Yeah. That's the inch and the or, quarter. Uh huh. And so we got the slip fitting, and then we have uh -huh. the thread. thread. And note that these threads are uh, a lot finer than the threads here, but uh, they work just fine. Yep. Yeah. Another thing, don't get bothered by the size of the threads. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll it's go in. It totally works. And that was just me playing uh, in the aisles, literally pulling parts off the off the shelf and testing them. Uh, going back and forth and uh, trying to figure out what would work. And um, I'm not going to say it worked perfect for me the first time, but this little method that I came up with works fantastic. Now, James, <clears throat> when we go to this wall of PVC, there's an interesting thing. There's another slightly smaller wall of black ABS. What is the difference between the two? Okay, so PVC is generally used as a primary pressure. Um, it's polystyrene. It's poly. Can't remember the name. I have it written down. Um, it's stronger. It can handle pressure. Um, it's also more resilient to sunlight, um, but it's not resilient to temperature. ABS is usually used as a drainage situation. It's a sewage or a plumbing line. It doesn't handle pressure. It's stronger than PVC. It doesn't break as easy, um, but it's also not good for something that's pressurized. It can't handle pressure. It's great for using as sewage, um, but it's not good for using for what we're doing. You could probably incorporate it into your drainage systems. The problem is there's not a wide variety of parts for yeah. it. So you're going to run into that a bigger issue, whereas... Now in the construction industry, we're starting to see everywhere is going completely 100% PVC. So even our vents and drains are now being run in PVC. Oh, well, why are they doing that? Um, convenience for one, one product as opposed to two different products. Um, and it's, uh, it's just a stronger product. PVC okay. is stronger for above ground. Okay. Let's talk about the tubing. This was tubing. actually a challenge to, uh, to find, and even I had to get uh, help finding this. And when I did, there were a number of choices, and there were actually two that looked like this. There was an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. So, Well, hold on a second. What do we got here? What the heck? Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. So let's talk about this stuff for a second. First of all. Okay, go got, ahead. We have to share. How did you get all that? Well, I happened to walk into Home Depot today and I was in the plumbing section and a gentleman came up to me and says, you look familiar. I says, uh, yeah, I do a podcast on, um, he's, Finish the sentence for me. He says, you're not that DIY guy from the Chameleon Academy, are you? And I said, yes. And he says, I says, I'm here to get some props for the show. And he said, what do you want? I'll mark it up as samples. And he gave me all of this crap for free. James is a freaking celebrity now. <laughs> uh, what, what the heck? <laughs> that is awesome. Is that crazy or what? Oh, boy. So, yeah, it kind of took me by surprise. I, I just kind of looked at him like, wow, okay. So, anyway, it was a great experience. So, let's start with this stuff. Yeah. I'm starting to use this quite a bit. It's one inch, inch and a quarter. Um, it's an OD, outside dimension. It's seven eighths on the inside. What I like about this stuff is you can stick it in hot water and it will... It will bend to wherever you want it to go, and then you cool it off, and it stays. Okay. It's kind of neat. And the name of this product is Washing Machine Discharge Tubing. 
All right. So it's designed to to be able to melt around for your for your washing machine. I really like this stuff. It works good with the slip fittings, not with the threading. Okay, that's the first product. And, and how the would we use one that? Is this stuff. How can we use that? I'm using it for my uh, my multiple cage foggers. Okay. So what I do is I'll come into a T where I just need a little bend to get off of it into cages. So I, I will set a T up at every cage. Okay. And when I get to each cage, it will have a T. And on that T, I put this tubing and I'm able to bend it down into the, into the cage. Uh, all right. So this way I can use this tubing for multiple, multiple cages. What's nice though, like I said, is you can heat it up and it will actually form to a shape and stay that way, which is really awesome. Okay. So you can have a nice fluid curve. You know, when we use these T's in 90s, the fog's got to go around a corner and you're losing volume when that happens. With stuff like this, you're able to make a nice, easy transition into the cage and it works really awesome. Nice. Okay, so then there's this tubing. This has been around for a long time. It's a, a, a garbage disposal discharge. It also comes in different sizes and they use it for um, uh, dishwashers. Your dishwasher will connect to the underside. The reason it has the uh, um, strings inside of it is to give it strength so that uh, when the water gets hot, it doesn't, doesn't, expand, it doesn't come apart on you. It's kind of like rebar is in concrete. Okay, not such a great product for using for what we're doing, but it is an option and it is a lot cheaper than most other options. Now, would you avoid that because it's clear? I would. Okay. Um, I, you know, how I am about this stuff is I would like to keep everything in the dark. Yep. It keeps that, um, uh, keeps the algae and any kind of growth from, from happening. Okay, and then the last one that I have here is pretty much the same thing as the blue tubing. Okay, um, and this is also spa tube, um, and it works the same, and it actually threads the same too, but it's a lot cheaper. Um, so, if you're on a tight, tight budget, you might might want to switch up to this stuff. It's not as flexible, and um, but it's going to save you a couple of bucks a foot. Okay, um, I'm still going to go with this. I love this stuff for what we're doing because it's super flexible. And it grabs really nice, plus the whole interior of it's black. Yeah. So I, I'm saying, I noticed this if thing. If you got the money, spend it on this stuff. Yeah. This this tubing was expensive, but boy, it does the job. It really does, and you're only using a couple of feet. And I'm, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, it's only about seven or eight bucks a foot. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, with, with what we're doing, it's worth spending the money to do. Uh, uh, get the tool and the materials that do the job right. There's one other thing you could do. I wouldn't suggest it, but this is an option. You can use what's called a union. <laughs> this will allow you to pull your bucket out and put it back inside, and you can hard pipe it all the way from the top of your bucket. What a union is, is it's got a rubber gasket in it too, and it's two pieces of pipe that have a smooth edge and it accepts another one that has an o-ring in it okay so basically when you slide your you separate it like so you can slide your bucket out this will stay attached to the bucket this will stay attached to the back of the unit you slide it back in and you just take that union and screw it together like so and it makes a seal that way you don't have to take all your PVC apart to try to get it in and out. yeah and as a reminder for everybody who's wondering why we're doing this uh, this uh, bendable tubing, it's because we want to be able to access the bucket. We want to be able to take the lid off so we can fill it. We can move it, move the bucket out if we want to. If you don't have a flexible tubing here and you just hard, hard connect it with the hard pipe, you're not able to, uh, you're not able to get the lid off to fill it. You need a different way to fill it, and then it's really hard to maintain it. So, this gives you the flexibility. To uh, to move things around. All right. Any any more uh, you want to talk about tubing, or shall I go on to the next? Let's go on to the next. I think we've covered tubing pretty good. Yeah, we did good job with tubing. 
Uh, the next was the actual lids to the buckets. When we go up there, we see a lot of different buckets. And then I go on Amazon and uh, looked on Amazon. And we've got the orange Home Depot bucket. We've got the black buckets. We've got the white buckets that are meant for food or whatnot. And so, well, okay, let's just stop at that one. Um, let's talk about buckets. What, what should we choose as far as a bucket? Uh, a bucket's a bucket. You can use one for the size that you want to, but, you know, like, like we've been saying, um, these Home Depot buckets, uh, these Home Depot buckets seem to do the trick really well. Um, you put your bulkhead in there, got your end on it, they're white. Um, if you're one of those guys, you can always get one of these. And, you know, <laughs> I like the, the other ones team. better. You can join the other team. <laughs> um, so... If you want to be, uh, 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 you want to be really, really safe. There's food grade container for use of food with this uh, this white stuff. Um, but you know, I've used the black. I've used the black ones and the I've used the orange ones, and I don't know that there's a whole lot of danger in that um yeah i found that uh, the five gallons is the perfect size um you have just you end up using about 4.5 gallons in your when you fill your reservoir up and um it's great because you're not filling the bucket up all you, you can get a whole five to seven days out of it yeah. um when i'm running just the fogger i can almost go 10 days um without having to add water to it so they're smaller buckets, but it's not going to work with the application that we're, we're showing here because once you start shrinking up the size, you're not going to be able to put all the uh, uh, accessories on top of it. Okay. Next is the covers. The actual covers of the bucket. And you would think, wow, do we have to get involved with that? Yeah, because we're cutting holes on top. And so all of these <laughs> ridges, they matter. And... Uh, I, I, it was actually surprisingly hard for me to find one that was completely smooth. And, <clears throat> but I finally figured out, I, I even ordered stuff off of uh, Amazon and it was just, uh, it came in smooth, but then it didn't fit my buckets. Like, oh my gosh, this is such a mess. But. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. What? What happened to your hole? Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't Do you have a beaver at your house? At the at the time, <laughs> did did you use the neighbor's mouse to chew a hole in that for you? All right, all right. right. Now, James. <laughs> oh my goodness! Didn't we go over hole saws, Bill? I didn't have the right hole saw size. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, saw window. Thought I'd give you some crap. You're you're, you're not sorry at all, but. <laughs> <laughs> I had a Dremel tool. Arr, 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 arr. I had a Dremel tool, and it works. <laughs> this is this is for the fan. Where's my fan? Oh man, I didn't bring my fan. But anyway, this is meant to be for the fan. And but this was the thing where uh, I have this ridge here, and uh, you know I got to install this stuff, and I figured out you know just cut through the ridge as long as this side. Is that the same level as this side? Just cut through the ridge. Yeah. Yeah, it looks kind of ugly, huh? Well, you know. <laughs> you know what? It, it wouldn't be a true DIY if something didn't look ugly. I mean, Correct. Well, you know, this well, is the yeah, first what time. What you've proven is you can use a razor blade or a Dremel tool as opposed to spending the money on a drill on a hole saw. So. Yeah, well, it was a time thing. Uh, for okay. my next one, I'm going to, I promise you for the next one, it's going to look great because I'm getting a, the right size hole saw. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, you know, at least I, and then I cut out, of course, the, uh, for the, uh, the electrical cord. Perfect. Slot for the electrical cord. 
And, I mean, that, it actually went together very easily. The, the biggest challenge was just finding the right stuff at Home Depot and making sure it all came together. And I think that's the part where we, if we give people a, a list and maybe a picture of what the things look like, yeah. it'll really help them. You know, uh, that was my idea behind doing this to help the community and make it easy for somebody to do it themselves and not have to spend a fortune on something. Yeah. And if we can, uh, we can make it so they can find it, perhaps find it on Amazon. We got to be careful about doing an Amazon price list because those things shift and, and all the time. So it's really hard to maintain the, the links to, uh, to get them on Amazon, but, uh, we, we can try a combination and, uh, and see how well we can get that. It's the same thing with Home Depot. Every once in a while you'll walk in there and they'll be completely out of the inch and a quarter to two inch. So you, you may have to adapt that you can get, uh, instead of going straight to the two inch, you can get an inch and a quarter to inch and a half to two inch. Um, sometimes it's a building process while you're standing in the store because they may be out of one part but you can still make it happen with what they have on the shelves. Yeah, and I think this is a an important a reason an important reason to understand what you're trying to do because if Home Depot doesn't carry a part uh as James said, you can find ways around that. I mean, if if they didn't have the inch and a quarter everything, I could have just said, "Okay, wait a minute. What about the inch and a half?" and then mm -hmm. seen if they had the parts for that. And so uh, it it pays to have not be so intimidated by all of these parts uh, that you don't understand what they are doing. There's nothing magic about any of these parts. Uh, they just fit together, and if you can't find something, well, see if you can change the size, and it'll work just, I mean, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, it'll work. It really does. It really does. And you're starting out with two inch. So the options are, you know, all the way across the spectrum when it comes to sizing, you know, you can go as far down as, as three quarter. I wouldn't, I would stay at the minimum one inch, yeah. but uh, you can find parts to make all of that work. Yeah. All right. Well, this has been, this has been a lot of fun making this fogger and, and of course, I have it in pieces now, so I can't show you it. <laughs> but uh, th this has been a lot of fun getting that all together. And th this, this is the best fogger you can have. This isn't just a fun project. This truly, we need a good fogger in the chameleon community. We do not have a good fogger in the chameleon community, a reliable one. And so we have to make our own. So this is, this is it. This is the best uh, option. And I'm telling you, it's. It's, uh, it's been a, it, it was fun making it in the first place. And then to be recognized for making it is just so cool, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all I did was throw something together in the garage, you know? So I want, I want to give it away to everybody. I want everybody to have this fogger, you know, I want to teach you how to do it. So this, um, this is now called the fog father fog machine. <laughs> fog father fog machine. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Awesome. All right, James, let's say goodbye to the good people and uh, we'll get ready for our uh, next week's episode. All right, you guys take care, everybody. Hope this works. Hit us up. If you have any questions, more than willing to help. And Oh, by the way, we have an Instagram DIY chameleon guys, Instagram. So uh, just Please. go to Instagram, sign up for the DIY uh, chameleon guys and you'll be able to see uh, a lot of DIY stuff and uh, you can ask questions. There. Ask questions. You can ask questions there too. And we'll really try our best to help you out getting your own DIY projects done. Yeah. And, and ask questions there and uh, we will are, uh, ask questions there or ask questions in the comments here and we'll collect those questions and we will answer those on air. So you know, well, let's all we're we're all having a lot of fun with this. So let's just yeah, this is a going. blast. <laughs> so all right then, we'll see you all later. <laughs>